Wow, very nice. These girls are fantastic. I lift that lid up and those girls are solid across there and they're making honey and they're making babies. Eric Olson owns more colonies than any beekeeper in Washington state. Hot dog. There's nothing greater than to open a beehive and see them doing well. They're doing well today. Look at that. I'm really tickled with this. But just months ago, he opened his hives and discovered nearly half his bees were dead. I spent 20 years as a pilot in the Air Force in my share of combat situations, and I never was as low as I was when all those bees were dead. That's the lowest time of my life. It turns out this may be the new normal. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says that nearly half of colonies across the country died in the 2014 season. Big losses have been happening for years, and scientists haven't pinpointed what's causing them. They say more than 60 factors may play a role in collapsing colonies. Factors like pesticides, malnutrition, and loss of habitat. If we don't find some answer, I am really concerned about whether these little girls will survive. But one unlikely solution may be growing close by, in the forests of western Washington. Oh, there's another one. Enter Paul Stamets. He's a pioneer in the study of mushrooms. This is a beautiful specimen. The white margin here means it's growing really well. It's what I call happy mushrooms. Makes me a happy person too. I'm involved in the study of fungi ever since a very young age. My initial interest was magic mushrooms and then I got into edible mushrooms and medicinal mushrooms and my mother was much happier. <laughs> Stamets scours the forest for rare types of fungi. I use mycology and the use of fungi to help clean up the environment, improve the immune system of animals, and I began to think. We've gone to the moon, we've gone to Mars, and we don't know the way of the bee. All right. You know, I bet you I can do something to help the bees. Stamets recently discovered a mushroom that might be able to take on one of the honeybee's worst enemies. And that's called the Varroa mite, with the, the name Varroa destructor. Varroa mites began wreaking havoc on U.S. beehives in 1996. We lost about half the colonies east of the Mississippi over that winter. Steve Shepard is an entomologist at Washington State University. He spent decades trying to understand how Varroa mites cripple honeybees. He says they invade hives and attach themselves to infant bees. I always think of it as having something about the size of a pancake beating on you. They live off bee blood and transmit a slew of viruses to their hosts. Some sickly bees lose the ability to fly and gather food for the hive. Many end up dying prematurely. They'll kill the colony within a couple of years unless beekeepers intervene. <laughs> That's why Shepard decided to try a new approach. Something doesn't look quite right with it. Yeah, it'll never fly. He teamed up with Paul Stamets. Stamets told him about a type of fungus that's highly attractive and highly lethal to termites. Shepard wondered what this termite-killing mushroom extract would do to the varroa mite. So we should... Uh... Do something with this, yeah. huh? Ready? He recently started testing the product on bees in his lab. So we take bees from colonies with high mite levels. We set up numerous cages, some with fungus. They're finding that the product is killing mites without harming bees. It's certainly uh, it's encouraging so far. And that's not all that mushrooms can do for bees. Bees have immune systems, just like we do. And these mushrooms, they're like miniature pharmaceutical factories. Their initial results show that certain forest mushrooms can reduce viruses in bees and help them live longer. I think I've discovered now that the fungi that are rotting the logs are absolutely critical for the immunological health of the bees. 
this is a really interesting potential breakthrough in understanding how nature works and how we co-evolve with fungi. Shepard and Stamets plan to expand both experiments by partnering with commercial beekeepers. Eric Olson was the first to sign up. I don't have too much hair left. Uh, I have pulled my hair out. We just can't seem to get a control on the varroa mite. We've got our fingers crossed. The future of western honeybee colonies and the billions of dollars of crops they pollinate may depend on it.